This was a renovation project, and I want to kind of just focus a little bit on the kitchen because it's a an area where um, uh, it's emotionally driven. Okay, and I always try to look at kitchens on what could be done a little bit differently. And the thing that was done a little bit differently here, matter of fact, you can see the wall coming out here. Well, right, this was probably a bad scenario, but right here is that stove. And this got opened up. So when I say dark, look at what we did with the lights there. I use can lights because when you use lights that drop down, it makes the room feel a little bit smaller, okay? So this is kind of what was done there. A workspace was done, put on the back wall there. But I often try to find ways that you can take a kitchen and make it bright. Why? It's an emotional focus point. Just like a bathroom is, an emotional focus point. Yes? So it's more of the, uh, the raw on the stove there. Uh-huh. Where's the steam going? <laughs> What's that? Where's the steam going? Mm. Good question. Now, not here. I don't even think it's in there yet. The, on the back of this stove is the ventilation. Okay, that's how they make them now. Good question. Yeah. So it goes right on the back of the stove. And it's vent, you know, you got it. Okay. Now, if this house was more of a ultra high end, I might have done, a, you know, a crazy hood here. I've done a house where I put a, um, there was a little bit of a peninsula I built out here. And I put a Teppan grill. It was made by, it was a high end home. It's a million dollar home. But I put a Teppan grill in there and had so that five people could sit around just like they do at uh, yeah. Benihana. That was a pretty cool, uh, if I get, I think I have some pictures, I'll show you that. That was pretty cool. But what's appropriate to the market, that's what you want to do, okay? But notice how clean that looks. There's no hood there. Um, it's light, the kitchen's clean, it's, it's efficient. Um, that's what I'm looking at, something nice and neat. Notice the transition between kitchen work area and travel area. Okay? Yes? Just stretching. Okay. So kitchen keys. And I've built a lot of awesome, cool kitchens. That's kind of my thing. Okay? Ask Heather. She'll tell you. That's my gig. Backsplashes. I have. Yep. I don't build them myself, but I've designed them. That's kind of my gig. I love backsplashes. Backsplashes provide so much character to a kitchen, and it doesn't have to cost that much money. You can do the tiles. You can do brick. You can do paint. You can do so many different types of backsplashes for kitchens. I did a kind of a mid-range house where... I took, um, they take brick and they slice it. And you can put brick on a wall to make it look like a real brick wall. And I kind of did a pizza oven kind of uh, look to it. it. Only if it's appropriate to the area. You're not going to do that on an $85,000 house, right? But only if it's appropriate to the area. However, on a low-end home, you can add tile and some other things to give it more of a high-end look, okay? Countertops, do what is appropriate. You're not going to take granite and put it into a lower end home. And even in a higher end home, granite is going out of style. Believe that already? We're just getting used to granite, now it's going out of style. You know what's in style? Cement, Cement concrete, yep, and what else? Quartz. Quartz. Does everybody know what quartz is? Quartz is where they take granite and they grind it up and they epoxy it back together and it's quartz. It's a natural stone look, but it's more, um, it's kind of more of a, a smoother look. You get more custom colors kind of thing, but it's, it's, it's great. We have quartz in our home, so um, it's pretty cool, but I wouldn't put that in an entry-level place, okay? You said concrete. Sometimes you can do concrete countertops. They look great. They absolutely look great, or, uh, um, and they're not that expensive. Oh, the, the, to do the work? We had a guy come in and do estimates for concrete, oh, granite. Good. He did it. Yeah. The concrete was more expensive than the granite. Really? The total like, job was $14,000. $14,000? $14, uh, you didn't do concrete countertops. You did a concrete parking lot. No, <laughs> it's so labor intensive. 
Wow. You used the lightweight concrete, didn't you? Really? Oh, Vancouver. But it's not even that. It takes it takes weeks to do it because you have to there's curing time. There's wow. Yeah, it's it's a labor. And Plus, your materials are a little more expensive there. Yes. Materials. You did it. Nothing. Just the labor. Got it. Got it. Somebody else had a question. Back here. No. Yeah. Um, wallpaper is something that was really big back in the day. It went out of style, but you know what? It's coming back into style. Absolutely, because it adds a texture to the walls that you just can't get. You know what they're doing now as well? They're putting wallpaper up that has texture in it, and they're painting over the wallpaper. So that also is coming back into vogue. So, um, you know, I, I, I like wallpaper for, you know, an appropriate room. I wouldn't put it in every single room, but I like the texture that it does that it gives. People are starting to feel the walls in here. Way to go, Ken. Yes? What about durable floor for a cheap house and like warm climate like Florida or Houston? Yeah, so his que her que uh, Oksana's question is, what's the most durable floor for a place like Phoenix or Florida? I like tile. Um, there's wood. different... There's everywhere, di like bedrooms. Everywhere. It's, it's pretty durable, especially on a low-end, because on a low-end house, you don't want to have to go in and start switching out carpets. In Florida, you got the humidity to worry about. Here, you don't really have that issue. But tile's probably going to be your most durable flooring. Now, they do make um, uh, faux wood floors that are also very durable. Okay, but of the two, I might go with the tile. Okay, and that would be appropriate there. It wouldn't be appropriate to maybe tile uh, a whole house in, say, in a different climate, in a northern climate. climate. It just wouldn't look as well. Okay, unless you're using like a travertine or something like that, okay? Any other questions? Yeah. What about steps? What about steps? Steps that are all carpeted? Is there anything else? The thing with stairs, it's a safety issue. So, you know, carpet provides a little bit of a um, tread that you can apply. If you're, you're going to put wood floors, we were walking on wood floors that were stairs that were also wood last week, and I go, man, if you're walking in your socks on these things, you're going to fall. So just be cognizant of that, especially if you're putting a renter in there. You've got some liabilities there. So what I would like to do, if it's a medium-range house to higher-end home, you can make beautiful wood stairs and just put a carpet tre tread right up the middle so the edges are all wood to show off that wood. You could do that. Okay. Any other qu good questions, by the way? Yeah. All right, there you go. And Carpet very, and laminate. Very, very easy to do. The questions are going all over. All of the nailing and everything is uh, on a whole different area. By the way, carpeting, let's just talk about that. Um, if you're doing lower end uh, things, I, I don't suggest getting a real low end carpet. It's going to wear out like that. And also be cognizant of the padding that you put in with the carpet. If you're putting in a lower grade carpet, spend more on the padding. Uh, it's well worth it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they ha my big concern because I have dogs, and um, when the dogs get excited and they're running at somebody at the door, especially my bigger one, that's uh, she's a little bit more uh, aggressive sometimes than she needs to be. You know, they have a tendency where they would scrape those floors up. So, you know, if you could, I like, that's why I like tile. It's a little bit more durable. However, if you go to Home Depot, and I forget what the name of the product is, or Lowe's, or wherever, you'll see that they have some really, really ultra scratch resistant flooring, faux wood flooring that looks great. It's very, now I sound like I'm working for these places. It looks great. It's very durable. 
Um, so you might want to look into that. They've really changed that quite a bit. But I, I like more of a tile, especially if it's a rental place. Um, it depends on the application. If I'm fixing and flipping this thing, I'm going to redo those wood floors and make them like they're, because wood, those old wood floors, how many houses have you been through where you pull up the carpet and you see beautiful wood flooring? If I'm flipping that, I'm going to expose the wood flooring. Right? Would I put tile on that? Um, if you're going to put tile on a floor like that, um, the concrete board that you put down, make sure you just don't screw it down. Make sure you also put an adhesive down before you uh, screw it in. That way you're not going to have the grout chipping and cracking and, and you know have moving on the floor. When you glue it down as well as screw, screw it down, I feel like I'm working for these places now. Um, you get a much more durable floor. You're not going to have the um, over time this happening. Okay. Also, if you're going to be in a, a house that you're flipping, you're on a wood floor like that, maybe you go from a ceramic tile, which is fairly fragile, to a porcelain tile. You can drop a nuclear bomb on a porcelain tile, and it's, it's much more durable than, than ceramic. So if you're looking at... Uh, doing things like that in in our um, in our home uh, we have a uh, it's all tile on the first floor but the tile you would swear is wood it looks just like wood but it's porcelain tile it's very durable um, and they've got some really neat tiles that you can work with I I, um, I built a restaurant like eight years ago and throughout the restaurant I put these uh, 16 by 16 square tiles that looked between a cross of they looked wood depending on how the light hit it. They looked like they were metallic uh, when the light hit it a certain way, and it really gave it a really neat look. So t there's a lot of things with tile you can do, but you've got to make sure it's durable because there's nothing worse than having a whole floor done in tile, and then, you know, after six months or a year, you've got, you know, five or seven that are cracked, and you can't replace those tiles. You know what I mean? So I'll always, always keep the box and extra tiles. So if Home Depot doesn't carry that one anymore, you can go right to the manufacturer and, and hopefully order those tiles. So always keep that box with extra tiles in them. Okay? All right. We go down the questions? All right. Let me check and see if we're good on the time. Whoa. Why does it do that? I don't know. Scary. We've got about 15 minutes till our next break. I hope you're excited. All right, good. Gilbert, are you excited? Okay, good. Open to family and dining room. We talked about this a little bit earlier. There must have been, you know, maybe even every one of those homes, I thought of ways that we could open that up a little bit. As I mentioned, the um, uh, houses in the 50s, it was very standard for them to build the kitchen. That was the wall separating the kitchen and the living room. You could walk right in, you're facing a wall. Why not take that wall out, open it up, and immediately when you walk in that door, you can kind of show off the kitchen from the cabinetry to the appliances to the maybe the um, way the sink is and, and you put maybe like a little bit of a, a bar there where people can pull up stools, that type of thing. So it gives you a much better feeling uh, with openness there. Eating bars, islands, as we talked about. The refrigerator, another important aspect. Like we said in the house with the blue sink, where does the refrigerator go? Very important to understand um, how to organize a kitchen so it works well, but is also aesthetic. Um, the hot things on the high-end list for high-end homes uh, used to be stainless refrigerators. You know what it is today? Built-ins that have the same fronts as your cabinets. Okay, so that's hot. The, the, uh, Stainless fridges are kind of going by the wayside. Um, cooktops were a very hot thing for a while. Now kind of on the high end range, what's going by the wayside is you have more of an industrial look or commercial look in the kitchen. Um, that's pretty hot. But the refrigerator is important. I think most people, when they're looking at a kitchen, for some reason, they focus on the refrigerator. What kind of refrigerator it is? Is it, you know, side by side or is it, up and down, that type of thing. So make sure that the refrigerator is clean, make sure it's aesthetic, make sure it's appropriate to the house. I wouldn't put, 
um, you know, a high-end refrigerator with, with uh, cabinet panels on the front of it if it's a $110,000 house. This doesn't make sense. On the low end, there's nothing wrong with a white refrigerator. Nothing at all. If you're buying a house, though, that's got the old TV yellow or the, the avocado green or, you know, some of those. You remember those refrigerators? Maybe you can put that out in the garage. That would be fine to put in the garage for beer. But in the kitchen, you might want to have something like a white one or a black one, something that's more aesthetic uh, to that kitchen. Ice cube trays, right. Is that your favorite? You like the ice cube trays? Ice, oh, that's right, for the renters, put an ice cube tray in there. Absolutely, absolutely. Questions on that at all? No? I, by the way, if you go to the Merchandise Mart in Chicago, maybe when we're there, that'll be part of our thing. The Merchandise Mart is the, I think it's the second largest building in the world. And it's, uh, the Merchandise Mart is all the designers uh, from all over the country. That's where they go to pick out the hottest, new, trendiest stuff. You know what's coming back in style? You won't believe it. The yellow and avocado green appliances. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. You're going to see that in a year. You will see that in a year. I promise you that. Um, flooring. Again, make sure flooring's a, a, appropriate. We talked about carpet, wood flooring, tile, um, other things. If you're um, one of the things I want you to consider with all of this, you might take a house that is entry level or um, mid-level, mid and you might, one of your themes to separate your house from other houses is maybe a green approach. So you've got you know, lower wattage bulbs or fluorescent bulbs. Uh, LED lighting is now very hot. Um, you might have you know, other things that make the house a little bit more efficient. You recycle, you, you collect the rainwater to water the grass, different things like that. With things like flooring, you might want to go to like a, a bamboo flooring that is uh, a little bit more eco-friendly than some of the other floors that you could choose. What's that? Or cork is another one. If you're choosing things like that, if green is your theme, then make sure that you're highlighting that to the renter or more, most likely to the seller. Or if your agent's marketing that, make sure they're marketing that as somewhat of a green movement, okay? Very important. Specialty lighting. Now, where's my rope lighting guy? <laughs> Who's asking the questions about right now? He's not even paying attention. Steve. Rope lighting guy, Steve. You were the rope lighting guy, right? Yeah. It's now your turn. You were at rope lighting. Specialty lighting is hot. You know, like I talked before, LED lighting is now coming into play. Can you imagine LED lighting? I never thought that that would be en vogue, but now that's becoming en vogue. Rope lighting. Um, they've really changed technology in that because, you know, 10 years ago, if you wanted to do rope lighting, you're basically taking Christmas tree lights, right, <laughs> and doing that. Now they're actually making specialty rope lighting. I think lighting is important in rooms. Lighting is in, not only important interior, but on the exterior. I would, if you've got a house tricked out with lighting, even an entry level home, I would uh, tell you to encourage your buyer and or renter to go check the house out at night. You're accomplishing a couple things there. Number one, you're showing off the house at night and the lighting. But number two, you're conveying to that prospective buyer or prospective renter that it's safe enough to go there at night, okay? But lighting really is a dramatic effect, effect in rooms. It's also romantic. You know what I mean? I just want like, my lights on. Oh, you just want your light? Are you having a problem, I, someone? I, yeah, um, <laughs> I bought them two years ago. You don't have a door to your closet and no lights? <laughs> you know, but he works awfully hard, though. He does. Maybe, maybe. You know, two I That's it, just two. I gave him solutions. Listen, I don't have, I'm not Dr. Phil. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I don't have hair, I'm, you know what I'm saying? But maybe, maybe, maybe Marco would say that you spend some money on things when we can use that to have someone come in to fix those he things. Is that true, Marco? <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, I'm trying to help out. Sounds like we've got some marital issues. 
Okay. Um, I'm just kidding with that. But lighting is very dramatic. Charles, have you thought about lighting that outside? Not only is it aesthetic wise, but it's also a safety issue. When the house is lit more, you know, security lights. I would have huge floods go on by motion detectors in the back there between the house and the garage and on the sides. I would also have, you know, lighting up the stairs and under that porch. I would have that like daytime at 12 o'clock at night. Does that make sense? Okay. So lighting also adds a security effect with that as well. So lighting is very, very important. Okay, everything from your rope lights to your floodlights. Okay. Also, now I'm on this green thing. You might want to have all the lights in like bathrooms and in kitchens, motion detector lights, so that when you walk into a room, it pops on. When you leave a room, it pops off. Some people, um, if you happen to leave a light on, and boy, are they misers you will get in trouble. There's no doubt about it. So if you install these things and it just shuts off, like if you leave a light on a bathroom, oh my gosh, you would think you just murdered somebody. But anyway, she's out, she's out on, she's on the balcony. So I can talk about her a little bit. Yeah, I happen to leave a light on sometimes when I leave the bathroom. Oh my gosh, you would think that I've got her mother in a storage unit. So, so, if you can put in these motion detector lights that when you leave a room, the light shuts off, you won't avoid trouble, okay? But if you've got... I want those. Can you tell him to put those in? But, He's an electrician. He's an electrician. I want those. Because he leaves lights on. Penny, you're getting a little too excited for the program. I can't believe how excited I am about those lights, though. Right. The house we went to see with the garage. Uh-huh. I forget which one it was. Right. Yeah, you can get all of that at Home Depot. Cool. Motion detector lights. Sorry about that, buddy. It's actually the switches. Have the sensors. Switches. Yeah. 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 The switches. The switches get changed, but also the like the security lights. The sensors on the light. Yeah. Okay, the sensors on the light exterior for exterior lighting. And if you're renting the house, make sure they know that hey, we've put energy efficient lights throughout the house. As a matter of fact, in the kitchens and bathrooms, we have motion detectors. So it lowers your utility bill. Okay? Yes, Steve. You've got cameras? Oh, I, th I was like, yeah, I've got cameras on every room. I'm just... In mirrors on the ceiling. Chicken bow wow! Okay, no. Um, uh, you've got dimmers on every room. Yes, it does lower the, the usage, absolutely. And the light control is nice for more of a romantic mood sometimes, Steve? Yeah. Yeah. Candles do that as well, Steve. What's that? Yeah. Oh, fire hazard. Okay. Yeah. All right. And he's like, yeah, I've got dimmers in every room, but I've got rope lighting everywhere. <laughs> you got a question right here? If you put a dimmer switch in a bathroom, why would you be reading in the bathroom? <laughs> you know, that's almost a little bit of TMA, too much, or TMI, too much information. Yes, I do most of my, or my best reading in the bathroom. And if that light goes off, you're just going to have to stay moving. Like you'll put the, you're going to have to put the book on your lap and read it like this. So that light stays on. Anyway, that's good. Reading in the bathroom. Interesting. Doing the green sheet in the bathroom. Yeah. You know what you could do? You know what you can do? Instead of, you know, if, the, if this is the toilet here, huh, yes, we are recording this. If, if this is the toilet here, instead of reading like this, you know, if you sit on that thing like this, you can actually use this part as a desk. You know what I'm saying? Why not? You're multitasking. And then that way, and then that way, when she goes, hey, what are you doing? You can go, I'm working in here. Anyway, don't get me started. Thanks a lot. You got me started now. All right. What's that? Yeah, yeah. You ride the thing, and then you can, anyway, desk right there. We can go on and on about that.
on and on. I'm going to go to one more slide here, and then we're going to take our mid-afternoon break. GFI, ground fault interrupters in kitchens and bathrooms. Anywhere there's water, you want to make sure that you've got these things in, just in case there was any kind of uh, electrical accident, it would shut a circuit off and no one would die. Correct, Marco? Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, as an electrician, you want to do that? So ground fault inter interrupters are important. Please point that out as a safety feature when you're showing the house. Okay, microwave, to put in a microwave or not put in a microwave? Well, depending on the market you're in, it may be appropriate to put in a built-in microwave. If you're in a rental situation, it may be appropriate to put in a microwave unless you're in the very low end. Sometimes they have the ability to, when they, upon move out, whether you know it or not, they happen to take some of the appliances. So on the very low end, if the neighborhood is inappropriate for that, you may not want to put in a microwave. Crown molding in the kitchen. I'm a big believer in crown molding in the family room, the entryway, and, and maybe the kitchen, just to set it off. Again, it drives emotion. Do not put, do not put crown molding in smaller rooms. It actually brings in the room a little bit. Okay, so this would be for larger rooms, entryways, if they're a little bit smaller, that's okay, uh, but big rooms and possibly the kitchen, okay? Faucets, spend money on faucets, okay? They have more of an aesthetic look, it's a little bit more high-end. Remember, it's like yesterday when I talked about the shower head, the giant shower heads? Same thing with faucets. Um, you'll see some of the, um, uh, I said that the wrong way, I said spend money on faucets. Don't spend money on faucets. And I'm going to show you a picture here in a minute. I'm sorry I got too excited about riding the toilet. Um, <laughs> don't spend money on faucets. There's, faucets are um, uh, very aesthetic today. And I'm going to show you a picture that I snapped at, uh, I believe it was Home Depot, on four different faucets from the high end to the low end. And they're very similar in look. Okay, so, and it does make a difference, by the way. Um, can lights, we talked about that. The only thing with can lights is they have a tendency to get a little warm. So you may want to consider that in your overall design. However, a lot of those can lights now are being uh, uh, turned into LED and some other lights that are a little bit cooler. So check into those. Kick plates with doors. It just gives it a higher look and more of a, an aesthetic finish, especially for doors in and out of the house. And the sink. Um, we were at a house last week in, we were in Tampa, and one of the things that uh, uh, people would look at when they walk in the house is the sink. The sink was disgusting. It was like a scratched up sink where they were, I don't know if they had science projects going on in this sink or what, but make sure the sink is spotless. One of the houses that we walked into yesterday, I can't remember which one it was, maybe it was the blue house. It had that blue tile, but the sink was immaculate. Did you see that? Did anybody see that or no? It was a stainless sink. It was beautiful. That, was it white? Then that wasn't the house. There was a house that had a brand new stainless sink in it. Do you remember seeing that? It might have been the cat house. It, it drew my eye to it. It was so clean and neat. Now, stainless, it, it tends to, you know, you can scratch those up pretty well. So make sure that if you've got a scratched up sink, to make the investment to put a new one in it might make all the difference. To me, it caught my eye. I don't know why the sink caught my eye, but it did, okay? Any questions before we go to break?